51, the deliverance of Muchikunda. This is text 51 through 54. No, 53. 51 through 53. Nirjitya dikchakram avabhuta vigraho. Varasana sta samaraja vanditaha. Griheshu maitunya sukeshu suyositam. Krida mirga purusha ishaniyate. Nirjitya dik chakram abhuta vigraho. Varasanasta samaraja vanditaha. Griheshu maitunya sukeshu yositam. Krida mirga purusha ishaniyate. Nirjitya dik chakram abhuta vigraho. Parasanasta samaraja vanditaha. Kriyeshu maitunya sukeshu yositam. Kridam yaga purusha ishaniyate. Ladies. <laughs> Nirjitya, <coughs> having conquered <coughs> Dick of directions, Chakram, the whole circle, Abhuta, non existent, Vigraha, any conflict for whom, Varas Varasana. On the exalted throne, sta, seated, sama, equal, 
Raja by kings Banditaha praised Grihesu in residences Maitunya sex Sukesu whose happiness Yositam of women Krida Mirgaha a pet animal Purusa the person Isha O Lord Niyate is led about so King Muchikunda is speaking and he has just been blessed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Sri Krishna Krishna is pleased with Muchikunda and now Mushikunda is responding to the Lord about the goal of life. <laughs> and he explains some of the misconceptions that great personalities undergo when they become powerful. And what happens to them once they live under those misconceptions how much they go down so he's continuous is a continuation having conquered the entire circle of directions and thus being free of conflict a man sits on a splendid throne receiving praise from leaders who are once his equals but when he enters the cha woman's chambers where sex pleasure is found he is led about like a pet animal O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Next verse. A king who desires even greater power than he already has strictly performs his duty, carefully practicing austerity and forgoing sense enjoyment. But he whose urges are so rampant, thinking, I am independent and supreme, that person cannot attain happiness. Mm -hmm. Today's verse. I'll just read the Sanskrit. Bhava Bhava Pavargo Brahmato Yuda Bhavjet Janasyatarya Juta Sad Samagamaha Sad Sangamo Yarhi Tadaiva Sad Gato Paravare Se Twai Jayate Matihi. When the material life of a wandering soul has ceased, O Achuta, he may attain the association of your devotees. And when he associates with them, there awakens in him devotion unto you, who are the goal of the devotees and the Lord of all causes and their effects. Please repeat, when the material life of a wandering soul has ceased, O Achuta, he may attain the association of your devotees. And when he associates with them, there awakens in him devotion unto you who are the goal of the devotees and the Lord of all causes and their effects purport Acharya Jiva Goswami and Vishwanar Chakravarti agree on the following point this is an interesting statement about reversed statements how the cause of something becomes mentioned first no second and then the effect is mentioned first so it's a reverse of philosophy although it is stated here that when the material life ceases one attains the association of devotees it is in the association of the Lord's devotees that enables one to transcend material existence so the reverse is Srila Jiva Goswami explains this apparent inversion of sequence by quoting Kavya Prakash as follows Karyam Karayayos Cha Paura Paura Parya Viparya Yo Vijayati Yoshokti Shyatsat. A statement in which the logical order of cause and effects is reversed should be understood as Ati Sayokti emphasis by extreme assertion. So they want to make a point, so the reverse is, is mentioned here. 
Srila Jiva Goswami cites the following commentary on this statement. Karunasya sigda karitam vaktum karasya purvam yukto. To express the swift action of a cause, one may assert the result before the cause. You follow? So the result is first, the cause is second. So it says here that after one is finished with material life, they get devotee association. But actually, it's the other way around. By associating with devotees, one's material life gradually becomes finished. <laughs> so that's the point. <laughs> In this connection, Srila Vishwanathar Chakravarti Thakur points out that the merciful association of the Lord's devotees makes possible our determination to become Krishna conscious. And the Acharyas agree with Srila Jiva Goswami that this verse is an instant of ati sayokti or inversion of principle. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jina Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Asmai Sri Guravena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Bande Ham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padekamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sha Grijatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Kaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Vrishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Taruvischa Kripa Sindhu Bebacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sriya Dvaita Gadadhar Srivas Nikoda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare A lot of emphasis on the purport is talking about the literary inversion of a point but what is the point that is being inverted <clears throat> is actually that material life can only cease only by the grace and the association of the great souls. Mm -hmm. So one may be frustrated with material life due to inability to enjoy material life, <clears throat> which is usually due to one's karmic karma effect. So one doesn't, one is unsuccessful in material life or suffers a lot in material life due to karma. But even though that's there, it doesn't discourage a person to keep trying. <laughs> Just the nature of the conditioned soul, that no matter, because they see others doing something similar, so they continue in whatever way they can to somehow or other find some kind of happiness in materialist life. But it isn't until the association of great souls that one actually, material life actually becomes finished. <laughs> Although one may have the desire <clears throat> for something better because one is impelled by one's karmic activities, one cannot change. Karma pushes a person in a certain direction. It's a, it's a driving force that makes one think and act in a certain way that causes one to continue even though one is failing. <laughs> Continuing with the material existence like that. We see that all the time. A person may be in a very pitiable condition. Just like Prabhupada says, there's a class of, not a class, but there's a country called, uh, what is that? Iceland, I think it's, where people, they live in, they call it igloos, they call them Eskimos, right? 
It's very cold there, extremely cold. And all I can do is, you know, eat big fish. And they live in a very, what we say, difficult situation. But they won't come to Krishna consciousness because they can't. Because they haven't received the mercy and blessings of the great souls. Mm -hmm. They won't give up that attachment, even though it's abominable. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of the conditioned soul. No matter how bad it is, they continue. Only when they get the blessings and the association of someone who is free from that and from the material existence can they begin to start to wind down their attachment and activities in this material world. So how valuable is the association of great souls? Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoy. Lava Matta, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. That's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's re referenced from another Shastra. I think it's Padma Puran. And it, it explains that the power of pure devotee association is so complete that a Lava Matta, Hmm. Now, lava mata means one eleventh of a second. <laughs> so, if you could divide a second into eleven parts, that would be a lava mata. So, the verse indicates how powerful association with great souls is. That in that one eleventh of a second, one can be purified from all material attachments and all material contaminations, provided one knows how to associate. <laughs> This is also the importance. Association does not mean physical proximity. Prabhupada would use the example that a, a king is there and a flea is sitting on the king. Now, the flea may be closer to the king than the queen in terms of physical proximity. But is there any connection between the flea and the king? No, not at all because you know, the flea has no understanding of that you know what he's doing or where he is <laughs> so association has to be consciously applied to the principle of activity that we associate in the proper way or we understand what is the mood of association so the basic principle of association is to hear this is the basic principle and it it doesn't change it simply evolves to greater and greater what we say activities on the process of hearing. So sometimes we hear that I've been associating with many great souls for many years, but I don't feel purified. I'm not purified. And that may be correct. So is this verse just a eulogy or a hyperbole, just making some exaggeration in order to inspire people to, to act in that way? No, Srila Prabhupada was asked this question. Well, we've been associating with you for so long and hearing from you, but still we don't feel purified. And it's obvious we're not because we still have material desires. So then Prabhupada clarified. He said, when the wood is wet, the fire doesn't light. <laughs> But when the wood becomes dry, immediately, as soon as it comes in contact with fire, it ignites. So the drying process is the continuation of the hearing process. So one has to continually hear in the mood of understanding. Hearing is also a very important part of association. In fact, it's foundational. But what is the quality and how do we hear? What is the the essential principle that makes hearing effective. This is also explained in the Padma Purana, where hearing has to take on three principal qualities that lead to the fourth quality, which is the result of that hearing. And what is those three principal qualities? One has, must have faith in the person one's hearing from. One should not just hear from anyone. One should hear from one who is qualified to speak or one who is practicing pure devotional service. 
And if ha one should hear from that person, in other words, one has, should have faith in that person, and one should be humble. Humility is the, is the medium by which one can absorb the sound vibration. If one's consciousness is blocked by a challenging attitude, that is full of doubts, one will not absorb the message. <laughs> because it's like a, it's like a screen that one, that's filtering out the, the, the actual sound vibration and one is getting what, only what they want, not what they need. <laughs> so one has to be humble. Humble means one hears with a submissive attitude and one tries to understand so that's the second thing. Now the third is a little more difficult and that is one should destroy the faults of the mind. What does that mean? Destroying the faults of the mind. The mind will wander during the process of hearing. Will go from one place to another. So one should be fixed on the sound. One should hear with, as Prabhupada says, with rapt attention absorbed in hearing the sound vibration in such a way that if one follows faith, humility, and absorption in the sound, then the fourth principle is the result. One gets two things, or two things occur. One gets realizations on what is being said, or one starts to question. Questions arise naturally and in those questions, one has been inspired to ask on basis of what they have heard. So this is the perfection of hearing. So, we, so in order to take the benefit of the association, one must practice these principles. And of course, association through hearing leads to seva. Mm -hmm. Seva. When one is actually hearing and inspired by that sound vibration, one will desire to do some seva. Like that. Like that. So one should continue to hear until that mood of service arises. Because as one becomes purified, the heart is changing, or the actual con pure consciousness of the, the soul is awakening. And what is that pure consciousness? To serve the Supreme Lord and to serve the Lord's devotees. This is the pure consciousness. It's covered. It's covered by material desires, material attachments, material misconceptions. It's covered by so many various ingredients of material energy. But as we hear, those coverings are being slowly, but what we say, firmly destroyed <laughs> and then what awakens is the desire to serve <laughs> like that and when the desire to serve starts to awaken and gradually one loses their attachment to material life <laughs> like that it's dangerous don't listen to this class if you're still attached to material life it'll just ruin your whole material life <laughs> Yeah, we say that sometimes, and there's that, ver that verse, don't go, don't go down to the banks of the Jamuna and see that beautiful threefold bending form of Shan Sundar playing on his flute and smiling so enchantingly. Don't go, because if you do, your material life is finished. <laughs> He's so attractive, you'll lose everything. It's dangerous. <laughs> so this is the process. Like I, a lot of times I meet people, they say, Maharaj, ever since I'm practicing Krishna consciousness, my friends don't seem as attractive to me anymore. My, my occupation is not as... I say, very good. You're actually making advancement. <laughs> so like that. So it's natural that, that those things that are, have caused us uh, attachment and activities in the material world, which we, we are so much 
absorbed in, not necessarily fond of, but absorbed in, gradually start to deteriorate as we associate with the devotees in the process of proper hearing like that. So association is the pinnacle or the foundation for all success in spiritual life. Those who don't see the need for association will not make tangible advancement. How important association is. When Srila Prabhupada was asked what's the most important thing in Krishna consciousness, he said there's three things, association, association, association. <laughs> and when you say something thrice, thrice means emphasis. Emphasis means there's no other consideration. Just like we say Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva Lom, Kalon Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Gatir Anyata. So the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the means for, for self-realization in this age. There's no other way, no other way, no other way, but in association. This is the key. In association with Vaishnavas who are also chanting the holy names of the Lord. We need inspiration. Association is natural for the human psyche in order to find happiness and fulfillment in life. Everyone seeks association. And Prabhupada said, even if no one associates with anyone, they get a dog. <laughs> and then they associate with the animal or some form of living being because it's natural to want to have another living being around. It's just natural. Those who stay by themselves, unless they're pure, self-realized souls who have attained complete perfection, or mm, otherwise, a person is not happy. Otherwise, a person is not happy. Self-realized soul is associating with Krishna in pure devotional service, so that is, he has attained the perfection of that association like that. So how important association is it cannot be emphasized. Prabhupada tells a little funny story about association. Would you like to hear it? You still awake? No, everybody's not? Okay. All right. <clears throat> this is an interesting story. It's a, it's a little, it's not a story. It's kind of like a, an analogy. It's called the power of association. So one man, he goes to the field in the morning to take care of business. So he's out there in the field and he takes care of business. And then he turns around and he looks at the results and he says, Oh, how nasty. And then the stool talks back to him and says, Yes, last night I was a very nice pakora, but since my association with you, I have become like this. <laughs> power of association. <laughs> so. so the point is that in Prabhupada when he heard that he, he liked that. You know? So association cannot be minimized or cannot be uh, overly eulogized. In each case association is the product of success. We see even in the material sense if a person wants to become successful in a particular field or particular business, he'll associate with people who are like that, who are sometimes better than him. He'll learn from them, get inspired from them, and also enjoy that association. So association is a feature of life that cannot be minimized or eliminated. But how important it is in the association of devotees because there is an added factor in the association of devotees and that is Krishna is there. <laughs> if you want to find Krishna, you can find Krishna in his, his association of his devotees. This is where you usually find Krishna. As Krishna says that, uh, you know, I am not in Vaikuntha. I'm not in Vaikuntha. I'm not in the hearts of the yogis. Where am I? I'm wherever my devotees are together glorifying me. This is where you can, we can find the Lord. 
Where the devotees come together to glorify the Lord, the Lord is so happy to be present in that assembly. So this is where we find the happiness in Krishna consciousness and the success of our devotional practice in the association of devotees. But the process that inspires us to take more and more association of devotees is to hear, continually to hear. Srinvata Svakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha Viranto Sto Abadani Vidhunoti Suhid Satam that Krishna in the heart of the sincere devotee who has an eagerness to hear, not just hearing, there's different kinds of hearing. There's mechanical hearing, there's dutiful hearing, there's, you know, like, like just like at the end of the class, you know, someone will come up to you and say, what was class about? And you'll say, it was all right, it's a nice class. <laughs> What did he say? Yeah, he made some good points. Do you remember anything? Uh, give me time to think here. <laughs> we forget, right? We forget. After class, we forget. So if we can retain at least one point in class and make that one point a feature of practice, then that class was successful. So hearing actually inspires change. Hearing inspires change. If for, for years and years, if we're still hearing and nothing's changing, then there needs to be some understanding of what are the principles of how to hear properly. Or what are those attachments that are keeping us from actually going deeper into the hearing process. Because Krishna won't let you go farther than you're already at. Before you can pass stage, to get to stage 10, you have to pass stage 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, the hearing process gradually purifies us. And as we become purified, we, we, we respond by, by acting in devotional service. Or by relinquishing our attachments in this material world. Mm -hmm. It's automatic like that. So one has to hear regularly with rapt attention. But then Prabhupada gives a feature of a, pr a principle of how the human psyche works. He says that no one can have rapt attention unless one is purified in mind. So unless the mind is purified, rapt attention cannot develop. Rapt attention means you're absorbed. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a state, it's a state of meditation. Not just hearing, but you're actually in a meditative mood of hearing. There's no other thing that comes into your consciousness. So, but one cannot have that unless they have pure consciousness. And then Prabhupada goes on to say, and one cannot be pure in mind unless they're pure in action. And then he goes on to say, but one cannot be pure in action unless they're pure in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. In other words, to regulate the bodily needs in such a way that they don't interfere with our practice of the process of hearing. And he says, then one can hear with rapt attention. But then Prabhupada ends the discussion by saying, in any case, just try to hear. <laughs> in other words, even though you haven't developed all these qualifications or states of purity, just try to hear. Try to hear as much as possible. This is the foundation for success in devotional service. To hear more and more and more. Practice the art of hearing. The more we hear, the more we get realizations. The more we get realizations, the more we're inspired to give up material life and to go deeper into the practice of Krishna consciousness. It says if you hear only once Krishna's name purely, that pure sound can eliminate all material attachments and material contaminations for millions of lifetimes. That's how powerful the hearing process is when it's connected to the pure sound like that. So how important it is to hear 
like that. So the nine processes of bhakti that's mentioned in the Shastras and by the spiritual masters all evolve or revolve and evolve around the process of hearing. Hearing is foundational to all. Srila Prabhupada talks about himself in this regard when his spiritual master was approached by one devotee who wanted to recommend Srila Prabhupada for initiation. He came and he says, uh, Guru Maharaj, I'd like to recommend Abhai Babu for initiation. Bhakti Siddhanta said, yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. He likes to hear. He does not go away. Mm -hmm. He likes to hear. So Prabhupada said, that, that was my qualification. He said, even though I could not understand, because my spiritual master would speak in such high, uh, elevated, lofty terms, it was difficult for me to understand, but still, I did not go away. I did not go away. So the process of hearing has such great results in our spiritual advancement like that. So one should practice this process. It's an art. I remember I was, you know, I listened to Prabhupada's lectures daily. So sometimes when I'm listening, I may be do, uh, doing other things. But when I stop doing everything and I just sit there and concentrate fully on what Prabhupada says, it's amazing how much knowledge is in each and every sentence and every word practically that it actually gives you such happiness just hearing the depth of these statements when when you actually tune in carefully to the hearing process it becomes so powerful as opposed to what is called just sur skimming the surface you know in one ear and out the other uh, i'll give you an example how the there was one devotee very senior devotee in our movement he travels around to different temples so he was going to one temple it was in America somewhere and uh, he, the, he contacted the temple president the temple president said oh yes please come the devotees uh, are happy to receive you but you see we're in the middle of a big festival now and so there won't be any devotees at your class but everyone will have their tape recorders playing. So you speak, and then all our tape recorders will be recording your class, and then the devotees will listen to it later. Very inspiring for the speaker, right? <laughs> it's quite the opposite. So he said, all right, I'll tape my lecture and put it on my tape recorder, and my tape recorder will talk to your tape recorders. <laughs> So then the temple president got the message. <laughs> so yeah, so that it doesn't work like that. It's it's personal presence in the mood of hearing. Sometimes we take notes during class, and there's a different, there's a kind of a controversy amongst that. Should we take notes or should we not take notes? Well, sometimes it's beneficial, but sometimes you miss some of the process of hearing while you're writing down notes. So, and when Prabhupada was asked that, he said, no, don't do it. <laughs> and I know many of you devotees do it here. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but if you can not miss what's being said while you're writing, because sometimes, you know, you're writing something down and the the speaker will say something and everybody will laugh and you'll say, what did he say? <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> so if, you can, if you're expert at keeping those ears perked and writing at the same time, then you can just funnel it, it'll go right you know, into the, from the ear into the pen, right? But the idea is not to miss the sound vibration because not only is the what is being said important, but the sound vibration is also an essential part of the purification process. Simply hearing 
transcendental knowledge is in what we self in itself auspicious activity. It's one of the auspicious activities. So this is a science, the art of hearing transcendental knowledge and the results of that. And it all comes back to the process of association. So therefore, even when we're not in the association of devotees due to circumstances, if we're reading Prabhupada's books with the mood of rapt attention or hearing his lectures or our spiritual master's lectures, we are in association with that personality. That is also association. But in order to be inspired in that mood, one should take regular association like that. These are only when it's not able to get that association like that. Okay, so so here, okay, one again, this point of reversed principle, inversion, where the the cause is stated before the effect uh, the effect is stated before the cause helps one to understand the, the importance of the principle that's being made. So this is a, a literary uh, expression in order to make a particular point of emphasis like that. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments? Jai Jagannath Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a very beautiful discussion. I don't, you were mentioning about four points that are required for hearing effectively. Yeah. You mentioned faith, humility, I think absorption, and then the fruit of such hearing. Absorption, it's, it's described as destroying the faults so of the mind. Right. That means when any other thoughts come out, one should immediately push that out. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so my question is about the first two points. Uh -huh. Um, one obstacle that I have observed over the years, especially as a brahmachari, is that we have to hear from everyone. Whoever comes and sits in the Vyasa sun, we have to hear from them. Um, at least in the spirit of humility, that we should hear from all. At the same time, we may be lacking faith in such persons for whatever reasons. Um, some of them may be psychological, some of them may be philosophical, whatever. But for some reason, we may be lacking faith in those from whom we hear, um, but in the mood of humility, we hear from everyone, but without having faith in the hearer, then it's actually impossible to generally appreciate in a very deep sort of way what you're actually hearing from such persons. And I've noticed this, of course, with myself, and I've also noticed it with those that I associate with, that this, the spirit of hearing would be very passive, um, non-interested, um, non-participatory, no one has any questions, no one's really thinking about what is being said, and primarily because there's a lack of faith from the person with, from whom we're hearing at that particular time period. So my question is how, how do we, especially as brahmacharis, we, I'm, I'm saying as brahmacharis because we have to attend the morning program, for example. As a householder, that's not exactly mandatory, you can hear from whoever you want. But in the ashram, we, we have to participate um, and so how can we, particularly as brahmacharis, hear effectively, especially from one another, although we may be lacking the, the actual faith that's required to make that hearing effective? Well, part of that understanding of faith is what's being said. The person who is speaking is a representative of the spiritual master. So if they're repeating the words of the spiritual master, then that's perfect. If they're not, then one should understand and then question based on that. But if they're repeating, which they should do, they should either repeat or speak realization based on what they heard. Both of, the, both of them principles are acceptable because both are coming from the same source. The realization of what you hear or the exact words of what you hear, either one. So this makes up the essence of the presentation. If someone is going outside of that, 
Just like there is a qualification for actually speaking and that one, one must be following the process. Sometimes we don't allow certain persons to speak because of certain activities that have been performed in the past that, have, that are questionable. Although they may have some knowledge of the Shastras because of the questionable activities or there are certain philosophical beliefs that go a little outside of Srila Prabhupada's presentation or in addition. So that should be understood ahead of time. <laughs> and then that can be questioned. So part of the question is that, you know, not only do you question, you may question the authority of what they're saying. If they're saying something that is, that is non-shastric or it seems like it has no connection, and one can question that. It's not challenging, it's meant for clarification or meant for understanding what is the actual principle that's being, you know, explained. So, yeah, you, I, your point is that we passively, as part of the morning program, sit in class every day and we are meant to accept whatever is there. So a person who is speaking should have some adhikari, otherwise just to speak, you know. There was one, one devotee who was asked to give class one day and he was really not enthusiastic about giving it, but they, he was somewhat forced to give it just to train him up. So what he did was he put, he had a, one of these cassette tape recorders that he hid inside his shirt and he had the earplugs in his ear with a thing over his head so nobody could see the earphones. So he would push the button and it was Prabhupada's lecture and then he would hear what Prabhupada said and then he would shut, shut it off and then say that and then he would turn it on again and like that. Everybody thought that was the best class ever. All he did was just repeat Prabhupada exactly like that. <laughs> he had no, all his, his own realizations were not there, but he was, per he, he gave a perfect class because he just repeated the acharyas. So either you're repeating the acharyas or you're speaking a realization based on your own practice of devotional service coupled with the knowledge you have received from the spiritual master and from the, the shastras like that. So sometimes if we're not versed in understanding, we may be, you know, we may accept something that is not bona fide or it's not what we say up to the standard. So that's why when the senior devotees are in the audience, they should also be aware of these things. So the junior devotees don't get you know, something they shouldn't get like that. Mm -hmm. That's why we say any questions, comments, or criticisms. <laughs> so you can criticize in a way to understand like that. But at the same time, those who are arrange things for speaking should not allow someone who is not you know, up to the standard to speak like that. So I can't give you, there's not a perfect arrangement in order to avoid that. You have to be a little bit, you know, intelligent to hear things and try to understand like that. But if you hear something that is questionable, then you should act like that. I mean, sometimes we do say things, like one time <clears throat> I said something in one temple and someone said, where did you hear that from? And I said, I heard it from Radhanath Maharaj. And they said, oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't give a Shastric reference. 
but I had heard it from Radhanath Maharaj. So when I gave the authority on where I heard it from, it was acceptable, but before that it wasn't. And then Shiva Ram Maharaj also said, yeah, sometimes I say that also. I hear it from Radhanath Maharaj. <laughs> so, yeah, so if we're hearing from one who is, you know, purely speaking, then even if don't, we don't have Shastric reference, we can also s s quote that personality like that. Mm -hmm. But if you make things up, like I made something up the other day in a, cl a college class, and I got challenged. It was correct philosophically, but I said it in a way that nobody ever heard it before. And some student was really sharp. I mean, he was really sharp. And he challenged me. And then I had to really take a long time to clarify what I was trying to say. Finally, he accepted it. I don't want to tell you what I said because you're going to challenge it anyway. So, <laughs> so it, it was just a play on words in order to bring that. Because when you're speaking in college, you've you got to be a little bit, you know, like innovative because they want something that's exciting. So I thought I used some interesting words to make the point. But this one student became a little bit concerned that he couldn't understand exactly what I was saying. Anyway, it worked out in the end. So, yeah, it's like that. So, and I was glad he challenged me because all the other students were there listening. And uh, he challenged me. It wasn't like he was questioning me. He challenged me. And, and uh, I had to defend myself. It wasn't easy. <laughs> Because I used terminology, it was he, we got stuck on semantics rather than on the point. The semantics became the point rather than the point, you know. And so that can happen sometimes like that. So I think if we're listening, we should have a little bit understanding of of the philosophy so we can, you know, make a discrimination based on what we hear. Anything else? Any other questions, Prabhu? Yes. Anand, Anand Vrindavan? Yes. Maharaj, okay. very nice class about hearing. You mentioned in the class, Maharaj, that uh, if a person wants to get a taste in hearing, then Prabhupada has, given the men Prabhupada has given the steps. The first step is that you should have a faith and after the faith, your mind should be clean. Once the mind can be clean, only by your activities is clean. The mind should be clean and after, once the mind can be clean, only when your activities in the full day is clean. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, then only your hearing can be effective. Yeah, it's called rapt attention. Yeah. yeah. So now, one thing is very clear, even if we wanted to get the taste of hearing, but even our li if our lifestyle is not clean, then we will not be having a taste for hearing. So that means our full lifestyle, our full activities for the whole day, absolutely depends how we hear. Yeah, so Prabhupada qualifies, he says, just hear anyway. Just do it. <laughs> even though you don't have a taste, force yourself to hear. <laughs> so. A lot of times you have to force yourself to do the right thing. Why? Because we're conditioned in another way. So we have to force. Force is natural when the activity is, you know, authorized or beneficial. Just like we have to force ourselves to hear the Hare Krishna mantra when we're chanting. We, we say, oh, I don't want to force myself to hear. Then you won't hear. <laughs> So in that case, Prabhupada is saying, force yourself to hear. Just hear. Don't give up the hearing process, although you're not, you're not purified in your activities yet. You may not have a taste for hearing, but hear anyway. Do it as an instruction. Okay. When we like something, or when it's more natural, it, 
then it's, we don't have any problems. But when something is good for us, we don't have a taste for it, then we have to make a little effort. But after a while, when you start to hear, start practicing hearing, you develop a taste for hearing. And it's usually not so far away. It's not like it's years down the road. The hearing process, the sound vibration is so attractive that if we practice the, the process of hearing, we'll develop an attraction for it. Hmm. So a little force is required sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Or Premanande Hari Hari Bhagavatam.